This week we build the sawmill and do a little bit of landscaping. I'm feeling my way out with all these different products. Today's video is brought to you by Helicon Focus. Helicon Focus is a photo stacker that will help you make the most clear photos that you could ever make of your model railroad so that you can share on Facebook or the Twitter to get 20% off your own copy of Helicom Focus, just go to modelersguild.com slash HF. And by patrons like you. I like to be inspired when I'm helping people. And that's the way I've felt for the last six years or, or more, actually. In the last year, I've had this Patreon page set up and I have about five or six patrons right now and you know I can't believe it and there's nothing that helps me more get into making these videos than a buck or two per produced episode it takes a long time to produce one of these shows with all the trimmings so chipping in in this way helps gives me a big thumbs up and maybe supplies the next homebrew thanks Scratch building a model is much like, yeah, you remember back in art class when, when you kind of copied from a picture and, you know, uh, like traced it and then you colored in your own parts and that was like your art. That was cool. It worked. You got a score. You, they graded you. And that works great in terms of the craftsman kit too. We don't want to struggle while learning how to build these kits at the top of our game. We want to do it in a very easy way. That's why we're spending the moolah on the kit. So in this portion of the shipyard build, we need to build a sawmill. Yeah, you heard me, a sawmill. And... It's not so hard after you consider that you've got this great big manual to go through uh, with instructions and uh, which boards to use and all that jazz. You also have a couple of templates where you can actually glue the boards down and make a direct copy of the walls required. Uh, it's, a, it's a great system and it really you know it takes the edge off of how hard these kits are uh, these this is the one of the secret ingredients in how it makes how a super craftsman kit a super kit or super expensive mofo whatever you want to call it this is the key ingredient in what makes it a great kit you know I don't want to struggle struggle to build this model so these templates, almost forgot the word there, are kind of cool. One thing I've noticed when making these kits is that sometimes you get overzealous and start using wood on another part where it shouldn't be used and that's where it comes in real handy to have a supply of your own wood and my wood I bought the overcuts and or the offcuts and overruns of various scale sizes of wood at uh Ooh, Mount Albert scale lumber and I think their their wood is the best that you can use they use white pine and uh, balsa wood and it's it's awesome like it, it I use it on everything that I do and you know my wood slips in just fine with anybody else's wood so you might be interested it, it, it's 50 bucks to get a box of, uh, of various lengths and sizes and it's like a killer deal so check them out Mount Albert scale lumber now the templates in this kit aren't only the ones that you uh, place on top of a piece of paper they are the ver the reverse 
of the template where you put the actual piece of wood in the slot laser cut into the piece of card and this is a great way to make uh, your ridges your your thing majiggers your truss trusses trusses that's what trusses this jig makes your trusses ladies and gentlemen let me introduce to you my favorite song of today the boomtown rats i hate mondays I know you'd love to see me build this uh, 
sawmill bench and uh, the whole rigmarole, all the rollers and how I painted it and all that jazz. Except I don't have very good eyes. And there is not a way for me to record this in a way that you can see it because I'm just kind of hunched over it like a sloth, you know, and like just painting away and trying to get her done. So it's really hard for me to, uh, here's that clock again. Uh, there's, it's really hard for me to, to show how I do it and it'd probably be better just for me to explain what I do after the fact showing it. So in a future video we'll talk about detailed parts and what I did to paint those things after the fact because I think there are some certain uh, uh, points that I could share in, in helping you to paint these detailed parts but it is just as hard for me as it is for you so uh, it's not going to be fun to watch me do it because it is a struggle. So there's that. Talk to you next week or whenever I pop out another one of these buggers.